This video was sponsored by Raycon. Death? Is that really you? It is indeed I. But you haven't been on the channel in years. I noticed. Um, this wouldn't happen to be about the whole shattered reality alternate Arlo's thing, would it? Of course it is. Arlo's are spilling all over the place, and the other cosmic entities are not pleased. Hey, it's not my fault the Raycon Everyday E25s are so affordable, coming in at about half the price of other premium wireless earbuds that they ripped open the fabric of space-time. If being able to listen for six hours at a time and up to 24 hours using this convenient charging case breaks the very laws of physics, then I can't be held accountable for that. Thanks to a variety of fit options, they fit so comfortably into any ear that I can wear them as long as I want. And if they're just so sleek and low profile and attractive with their range of fun colors that they fractured subspace. Well, I don't know what to tell you, man. They even have a 45 day return policy, so this ain't on me. I care not for your excuses. I need to know how you are going to atone for this catastrophe. What can you offer to even begin to repair the damage you've caused? 15% off your order by heading to buyraycon.com slash Arlo or clicking the link down in the description. It's a start, huh. but I'm taking these two. No! I mean, looking at this? Hello my wonderful friends and welcome to yet another edition of the Nintendo News Roundup. Before I get started, I'm on Cameo. I'm, I'm doing Cameos. You wanna have a Cameo thing where the person says something for you? There you go, I'm on Cameo. Link down in the description. Go nuts if you wanna. That's enough of that though, gotta dig right on into it because it has been another busy week, so let's uh, get started. So just by coincidence, this last week I received two separate emails from separate people with uh, little uh, tips for potential news stories that other people uh, do not seem to have picked up on yet. So um, I suppose that makes this two exclusive scoops. Never had an exclusive scoop before. As with any rumor ever, take it with a grain of salt, but uh, I suppose you might be able to say you heard it here first. A fellow who goes by John Drawn spotted a job listing on the Nintendo of America website. The job is for associate AV producer, and uh, in the job description, one of the items is, may assist with filming live action footage for use in Nintendo Directs and other content marketing initiatives. And also separately from this position, they are hiring a producer slash cinematographer. So, I probably don't need to tell you why this is pretty interesting. Does this mean that Nintendo is still planning on doing more live action content, specifically Nintendo Directs in the future? And it, it could just be that this is a carryover description from the job from earlier. You know, maybe they have a use for this kind of thing that they used to do in Nintendo Directs, but they're not technically doing it now, but they still need the position for other stuff. Who really knows? But I think that's a pretty, I mean, I've, I've seen news articles on less than that, <laughs> so I think that's a pretty good scoop right there. Then another gentleman who has decided to remain anonymous uh, has noticed that Nintendo has filed a trademark for the Wind Waker in Australia. As always, trademark filings can mean everything or nothing, and we don't really know. Um, he does point out that there, the, the Legend of Zelda is not a part of it. It's just the Wind Waker, but it does appear to be filed by Nintendo legitimately, not sure why just in Australia or what, but every once in a while, these can mean something. It's just, I made a Wind Waker HD coming to Switch sometime soon. I don't know, it's the anniversary of Zelda. You never know, it's another decent old thing right there. So many thanks to you two guys, and if anybody else has any uh, exclusive scoops for me, uh, be sure to let me know, I guess. So after receiving over 25,000 complaints from customers across Europe, the European Consumer Organization is basically putting their foot down and demanding that Nintendo do something about the Joy-Con issue. Basically like, hey, this is a bad problem. You can't ignore this anymore. You're probably breaking a lot of laws right now. Um, they say consumers assume the products they buy to last an appropriate amount of time according to justified expectations, not to have to pay for expensive replacements due to a technical defect. Nintendo must now come up with proper solutions for the thousands of consumers affected by this problem. So it's kind of like the whole loot box thing. You know, people can get mad all they want, but once like lawsuits start happening and once like entire countries <laughs> start getting involved, start getting a stake in this, uh, that's when you know things are really heating up. So. Balls in Nintendo's court. Well, I try not to smirk too hard about this, but we'll see what happens. Nintendo has revealed the next update for Animal Crossing New Horizons. It will bring the holiday 
It looked like Festivale at first, but then I realized it was going off of Festival, so, I, but there's no accent, I don't, I'm not really sure. Fest is something. It's got a cool peacock guy in it. It's a pretty standard thing where you just kind of catch, collect the things to craft the things. And it's funny because I feel like we're kind of reaching a point here. Like usually the comments are pretty positive, at least from what I see. But this time almost everyone was like, really? This is all we're getting? I don't really know. I don't, I'm not really invested in Animal Crossing anymore, but I did see a lot of disappointment there. That it's just kind of another thing where you collect the things and craft the things and that's just kind of it. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of hoping that there's some big, uh, big update planned for, uh, you know, the one year anniversary in March. I don't know if that'll happen, um, but we'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, you're collecting peacock feathers, I guess. <laughs> I don't know a lot about Animal Crossing Amiibo cards or why people like them so much or what the purpose is exactly, but I know people do like them a lot and apparently um, Sanrio Amiibo cards are being reprinted coming back in March. So that's pretty cool because that is some Animal Crossing cards that people probably want. <laughs> A couple weeks ago, I reported on a new line of Animal Crossing themed makeup coming out and uh, apparently it all got bought up in about an hour, just gone in an hour. As with all things, makes you wonder why you put all the trouble into making a product and then like, oh, it's gone in an hour. Well, what if you made enough for like two hours <laughs> or maybe even like 24 hours or something? I don't know, maybe they'll, they'll restock it. I'm not exactly sure, but apparently the demand was pretty high for Animal Crossing makeup. Who knew? Hideki Kamiya is teasing Bayonetta fans again. When asked about any upcoming games, he, he basically said, oh, it's January, it's early in the year, like something's gonna come out this year, so be patient. But then on the subject of Bayonetta 3, he basically said, you know what? You should probably just forget about it for, <laughs> forget about it for a while. And I, you, we don't really know if this is him saying it's gonna be a while, so forget about it, or he's just saying, I don't want you to worry about it and ask me anymore. So if you forget about it now, whenever it comes out, it'll just be a nice surprise. But uh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Basically, give the poor guy a break. They announced that game way too early. I don't know what's going on or something, but, but uh, he just won. <laughs> the pressure's getting to him, I think. Pokken tournament producer Katsuhiro Harada was recently asked about Pokken and if we're gonna see another Pokken game in the future. And uh, he basically said he would love to do it, but it is not Bandai Namco's decision. It is Nintendo's, the usual answer. But it is good to know that he, you know, he likes the game and he's at least uh, willing to invest into another one if the opportunity should arise. A week or two ago, I reported on a uh, version of Pokemon Red playable on Twitter. Uh, you could see the game in the Twitter profile picture and people uh, input uh, the, the, the inputs into the replies on the tweet, which is incredible. The picture updates every 15 seconds. So people have been slowly working their way through the game over the last, uh, last week or two and uh, they beat Erica. That's half the gyms down. Congratulations, everybody. Though I must apologize, Twitter plays Pokemon is pretty darn cool, but it doesn't quite compare to Hamster plays Pokemon. A YouTube channel called The Hamster Maze Adventure has set up a whole little Pokemon themed adventure for their hamster to go on. It is too much. It's too much for me. It's a little bit too much cute. It is hard to handle. Watch with caution, if you will. So Astral Chain was a Switch exclusive developed by Platinum Games. I did always wonder um, how exclusive or if it would be exclusive forever, but it seems that uh, according to Platinum Games, Nintendo is now the full owner of the IP. It's kind of cool that it's like a Nintendo thing now, completely, like officially, um, though there is like that one small part of me that like, uh, Nintendo likes to not use their IPs though. So is this a good thing or would it have been in better hands with Platinum? Would there have been more of a chance of getting another one if it stayed with Platinum? I don't really know, but that is a thing. So this is something I do not believe I've ever heard of before. Originally, there was a feature um, planned, at least by someone, for uh, Donkey Kong 64, possibly other games, um, called Stop and Swap. Um, basically, when you take a cartridge out of the N64, it would keep like some small amount of data in its RAM for like a few seconds. Uh, so um, people were saying, oh, you could like have one game and then take it out and put in another game and it would know that you own the other game. So you could like have items and stuff that like, you know, special content that exchanges between them. And um, it's a pretty interesting idea, uh, though apparently Nintendo put a stop to it pretty quick. 
And the actual letter from Nintendo to Rare when they were working on DK64 has recently come to light. And uh, we can see that they just thought it was a bad idea, potential for damaging the system and the cartridges. Um, and then I, I guess not all games after that point would use that, you know, would uh, would store information in the N64. So just a bunch of technical reasons. They, they were, you know, just use passwords. <laughs> just use passwords. They're just as good. And you know what? They were probably right. They probably kind of dodged a bullet there. That could have led to some problems. But it's really interesting, isn't it? I don't know, it's just like, what a weird little piece of history. Nintendo has shared some more details about Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury and uh, press, uh, some members of the press, not me, <laughs> have gotten their hands on, uh, on their early copies. And it is absolutely officially confirmed that every character's running speed has been increased drastically, um, which looks Awesome, really, really great. Makes it look so zippy and cool, and it won't be as easy as the original was, and that was one of my biggest problems with it. So that's cool. Um, the game will also use gyro for, uh, you know, previously touchscreen sections, which, uh, you know, a little predictable, but there you go, there's the answer. Early reports are saying it'll be about three hours for the Bowser's Fury campaign, maybe like six to like collect everything. That's gonna vary from player to player, and that's just what I've been hearing initially. Um, but if that's true, yeah, that's what I expected. It's, it's, uh, it's what I expected. It's fine. Speaking of Mario, Mario Train! Apparently there's a Mario Train uh, meant to carry people to uh, Super Nintendo World, um, which is, you know, it was supposed to come out in February. It was supposed to come out in February, like it's, like it's a game. It's supposed to open in February, um, but it's not, but they thought they would still reveal the big Mario Train just because uh, it's cool. As they literally said, just to make some people happy, because like, hey, we got a Mario Train. We're not gonna not show people the Mario Train. I wanna ride them. Mario Train. Pokemon Go player by the name of Fleece King has become the very first Pokemon Go player to reach uh, rank 50, level 50. So that's cool. Congratulations, <laughs> Fleece King, I guess. Uh, apparently it was uh, very close. There was another player who was behind, behind him by minutes. Mere minutes. That's nuts. Pokemon Company has revealed Mr. Mime, Mr. Rhyme, and Frostmoth uh, plushies. It's, uh, it's a weird... It's kind of a weird, I mean, they have a lot of plushies, but it's just such a weird little selection here. It's just like specifically the two mimes and then just Frostmoth. Just like, it's uh, it's a little random. Not a big fan. Not a big fan of the mime line. I'm really, I'm sorry, I'm really not. Oh, that Galarian Mr. Mime. Ooh, I don't wanna look at it. I don't wanna look at it. Not sure how many times in the course of history this has happened, but McDonald's is getting Pokemon Happy Meals again. Uh, apparently these ones will give you some cards which means that um, most people who receive them will not be kids, as intended, most likely. Cubfu and Garchomp nanoblock sets are coming soon. If you like nanoblocks. That's like Lego, right? It's just like, a, it's just like Lego, but a different one? I don't know, I don't get it. You Pokemon, you couldn't have gone with the premium, the, the, the premium toy, come on. I don't know anything about nanoblocks. Uh, apparently a few years ago, this is before, obviously before I was doing uh, news roundups, um, there was like an initiative to put Pokemon manhole covers all across Japan. This has been an ongoing effort and apparently there was a, recently a new batch of them went in and uh, Nintendo Life has uh, done a great job gathering up a lot of the really cool ones here. That's very weird and random, but I like it. Why not Pokemon manhole covers? Why not Pokemon manhole covers? Because why not? That's why. Big news for collectors and scalpers. <laughs> Monster Hunter Rise is getting a beautiful little limited edition special Monster Hunter Rise themed Nintendo Switch. And along with this set, you can get an official Monster Hunter Rise Pro Controller too. So you get the whole Get the whole shebang, the switch, the dock, the, the everything, the controller, the everything. Just don't forget the game though. That would be pretty embarrassing. Now I don't usually report on modding stuff just cause there's so much of it and it's not exactly news, um, but every once in a while something particularly interesting comes up and uh, I believe this is one of those times. A Breath of the Wild modder who goes by Waiku Teru has just had something of a breakthrough, has just uh, cracked the code as it were and is now able to edit the terrain in Breath of the Wild. I'm sure like individual small scale edits were possible before, but now it is easier to uh, just kind of input large amounts of data uh, for shaping the terrain. They've demonstrated this by putting Skyloft from Skyward Sword just right there, just right there in your Breath of the Wild there. And I gotta say that is pretty darn cool. I, 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 th I just think this could be the start of some really big, really cool Breath of the Wild modding stuff. Not that I support modding, 
because I don't want Nintendo to get mad at me. Just kidding. They don't. They don't send me games anymore anyway. So, <laughs> so who cares? <laughs> A Reddit user by the name of Theme Park Fan 2020 noticed that the uh, the I guess it's called the tag. It's not the the display name, but like the little, little at tag for the uh, official Rabbids Twitter account changed recently. It was at Rabbids Official, but it changed to at Mario Rabbids. This led many people to believe that maybe there was something new in the works. Why would you do that? Why would you switch it just from Rabbids to Mario Rabbids? That's pretty interesting. And the official profile pic is Rabbid Mario, so uh, maybe something. Uh, and then they, then they changed it back. Um, I don't know why they changed it back. They could have changed it back because everyone noticed and they didn't want everyone to notice. They want to keep it a secret. Or it was just a nothing thing that happened for no reason. Who knows? I sure hope it was a good reason, though. I hope we're getting Mario and Rabbids, too. I really, really like that game. And I often forget that it existed. I don't know why. I just, I forget to bring it up in, like, any any kind of list of, like, big first-party Nintendo games. I just forget that it was a thing. I love that game. It's delightful. Go play that game. It's on sale, like, all the time. And that is it, my friends. That is that. That's the news for the week. I am very glad that you were here to watch and listen to the news as I delivered it to you. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. See you next week. What am I doing? See you later. Bye.